In this video, I'll be answering the question you see on the screen here from paper 33 from the year 2024 Cambridge A-level exams. If you're looking for a different question from this paper, there should be a link to a playlist in the description below. And if you're looking for a different paper, have a look around on my channel. I'll be doing all this on a whiteboard, hopefully just like you're used to your teacher doing. But remember, we're not in a classroom, so take advantage of YouTube, pause, rewind, whatever helps you out. Uh, if you find this or any of my videos useful, I would greatly appreciate a like, a subscribe, or even a share. In question eight, they give us this trigonometric expression here, and they ask us to write it in the form of or cosine uh, 2x plus alpha. This is, uh, again, a, a common enough occurrence. They won't always be as nice, as, you, as nice to you to show you that this is what they want. They'll sometimes just give you this, and you'll need to know to turn it into that. That makes it a lot more difficult. Um, but, but again, it's, it's quite common, it comes up uh, regular enough. Uh, so how do we do this? Um, first thing we could actually do is, is expand this side. It's a bit unusual to expand what you're looking for, but I think it'll help us understand, um, actually it's, it's how I'm gonna do the question, but it'll certainly help us understand how the two are, are combined. If we just go to our trigon trigon trigonomic expressions, we can see that we can expand this by, uh, leave what we're outside for now, cosine of two angles is equal to cosine of uh, the first angle multiplied by cosine of the second angle. Uh, when, when they're added then we end up with a minus here, a minus sine of the first angle and sine of the second angle. And again, I can write this again, multiplying or into both of them. Uh, in fact, let me just take this bracket out and we'll leave or times this and we'll put an or in here. Okay, so they want this to look like this. But what I'm saying is it already does. So uh, I guess I will write this one more time. I'll write or cosine alpha. Just put a bracket around that, multiplied by cosine 2x. And for this one, I'll write or sine alpha multiplied by sine uh, 2x. That's the same as I have here. I have something multiplied by cosine 2x minus something multiplied by sine uh, 2x. Uh, sorry, the bracket should be around this one here. Um, so what I can say is or cosine alpha or cosine alpha must equal 3. I can also say or sine alpha or sine alpha must equal square root of 3. And again, it's quite a common way to do this. Um, just solve for, hey, we have two equations, two unknowns, just solve for or, solve for alpha. The easier one to solve for is alpha. If we divide the bottom over the top, let me write all that out, or sine alpha divided by or cosine alpha, that must equal again the bottom divided by the top, square root of three divided by three. Uh, the ors cancel. Uh, sine alpha combines with cosine alpha to become tangent alpha. And that equals, uh, I guess, one over square root of three. Uh, solve that, put that in a calculator. Inverse tangent of both sides. Uh, the inverse tangent of one over three is uh, pi over six. That's alpha, that's half uh, the answer. They, they just want to or then. Um, put, put in uh, any one you want. Or times, or cosine uh, alpha equals three. Or must equal three over cosine alpha or must equal three over cosine of pi over six. Um, let me just double check my notes here. Is, uh, oh, I don't have it out here. Cosine of pi over six. I put it all in the calculator and I got uh, two square root three. And that's, um, that's the answer for part A. Alpha is this uh, or is, is this. Um, oh, I'm sorry, did they want us to write it out or I think they want to write this out again, I suppose. So let's do that. That's a two square root three uh, cosine two x uh, plus pi over six. Again, we need to do this for part B anyway. So uh, I'm not sure what's, what's the full answer. Is it this, these two numbers, or they want you to write that out? Anyway, either way, we've answered part A. Let me clear this off. I'll keep this as information up here, and we'll do part B.
Okay, in part B, they give us this very scary looking uh, integral, um, but hopefully we notice very quickly that this is the same as from part A, um, this bottom row here. So we can uh, quite easily rewrite this as pi over 12, 0. Um, 3 on top won't change, but the bottom row will turn into this. Uh, 2 square root 3 uh, by cosine 2x plus pi over 6 and all of that gets um, squared. And that, that we can actually do quite easily. Let's continue on down here. The integral, um, well, let's bring three outside, and we're left with, uh, this three just comes outside, it's just a constant, it doesn't have to get integrated. And the square of two is four, square of square root of three is three, three times four is 12. That can come all the way outside as well. Um, and on the bottom row, we're left with cosine squared, um, uh, 2x plus pi over 6. Oh, and uh, dx. This is a lot more manageable now. In fact, uh, it's something we can actually do without much work at all. A couple of things I want to point out to you. Um, it's not x in here, so it's not simple. We'd have to substitute that, but it's a substitution we can do in our head because the derivative of this is just a number. Uh, we only get in trouble when the derivative is um, a variable. The derivative of all of this is just 2. So if we go ahead and integrate this or differentiate it, it's very easy to manage um, because of that. That's one thing I want to point out. The next thing that's really important to point out here is 1 over cosine squared is the same as secant squared. And they give us the answer to the integral. Uh, the integral of secant squared is, is given to us in our formula. It's just equal to tangent. So that means uh, this, I can rewrite this as uh, 3 over 12, the integral of 1, I'll, I'll, I'll write all these at the end, uh, 1 over secant squared of something, um, 2x plus uh, 6, sorry, not 1 over secant squared, um, just secant. Secant, um, it, secant squared is, secant is 1 over cosine, so secant squared is 1 over cosine squared. So the integral of this just uh, just equals 3 over 12, doesn't change, um, equals tangent of uh, 2x plus pi over 6. But again, like I said, we have to be a little careful here. It's not just simple x. Um, we would have to substitute this. Uh, let me substitute it. u is equal 2x plus uh, pi over 6. Um, but we're just going to differentiate this and end up getting dx is equal to 1 over 2 uh, du because the derivative of all this is just two. So we can do that in your head if you want. Um, the integral of this is this, once we divide by an extra two. Um, and this is all still evaluated between pi over 12 and zero. We can go ahead and do that. Uh, that's three over 24, which is the same as one over eight. Um, is that right? Uh, yeah, one over eight that becomes. Um, and that's tangent of, let's see, pi over 12. Two times pi over 12 is pi over six. Pi over six plus pi over six is pi over three. That's when I put this number in. Let's put zero in. We take away one over eight uh, tangent, that's zero. So it's just tangent of pi over six. Um, yeah, I think we have enough room to finish the final answer down here. Um, putting, up, putting this in, we get tangent of uh, pi over three is square root of three, so that's uh, square root of three over eight. And tangent of pi over, over six is um, square root of three over three, oh, and the one over eight. One over eight, there's a minus there. Uh, I guess you could solve that with a bit of algebra, but uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and just use my calculator. I threw it all in the calculator and I get square root of 3 over 12. Okay, if you have any follow-up questions of anything I did there, let me know in the comments below. I'll do my best to get back to you. Thanks for watching and have a great day.